Hey guys, Pete here with GIS Solutions. Today I'm going to show you how to use the temporal tool in QGIS to animate your data. Stay tuned. Okay guys, so let's get started. So the data I'm going to use is hurricane data from this website here, a NOAA website. I'll leave a link in the description down below just in case you guys want to follow along. So if I come down here to shapefile data, and NA right here for North America. There's a point layer that's zipped up. I'm not sure exactly what these all mean, but I think they're different parts of parts of the world basically. So again, I'm going to download the North America points layer. And in my downloads, I'll go ahead and extract that. Okay, and with that, I'll copy that extracted folder and I'll put it in my project file under Sheet Files. I'll paste that there. Okay, so in QGIS, I'll pull in that Sheet File that I just downloaded and unzipped by going up here to Layer, Add Layer, Add Vector Layer. And let's see here, if I go over to my project folder, shape file, and it's right here. I'll go ahead and open that up and add. Okay, so again, these are all the, the data set from North America, all the hurricane paths. But let me go ahead and just put a background to this. If you guys want to know how I'm adding this background, um, I'll go ahead and put a, a link in the description down below on a video I did about adding various backgrounds to your QGIS project. Okay, so what we do now is go to the properties and I'm just gonna query out a particular um, hurricane path. The hurricane path is Hurricane Katrina that happened here in North America in the year 2005. So I'll go and query just for that one. And I looked at the data already and the data, the year is under season. So season equals 2005. And the name equals Katrina, and I just want to double check if this were all caps or not. It looks like it is all caps, so I'll just find it and select that. Katrina. I always like to test and make sure that my statement is correct, and it looks like it is. Go ahead and say okay. Okay, so here is the path of Hurricane Katrina in 2005. Let's go to the attribute table. And to show you, the data ha that you're using has to have some sort of a, a time, whether it be uh, by, by, by date, by month, month and time, and mine, mine has both. So that's the timestamp I'm going to use to show the, the animation. Um, I also have some wind speeds here, which I'll help use to uh, symbolize the data here. So let me just do that real quick. Double click, come over here to Symbology, categorize by the wind speed. Okay, these are knots. Classify that. And I'm gonna do a color ramp of reds. And I'm just gonna bring the, the symbol size up just a little bit more. I'm going to select them all, change size. I right click there to get to this little window here. And I'm going to bring up to six. I'm going to say OK, apply, and OK. OK, so here is my data. It started, the wind speeds were a little bit low. They gradually increased in intensity and dissipated as it hit the mainland. 
So in my data set here, I'm going to go to properties again, come here on the left side here, come down here to this little clock, it says temporal. We have to enable the dynamic temporal control by clicking onto this box right here. As you can see, it's now activated. The configuration, in my particular case, is a single field with a date and time, opposed to separate uh, separate fields for start and end times. So I'll include that. I'll leave this as the default, the limits. It's just, uh, include. it does include the start and end time. Actually, I take it back, I'm gonna, instead of it includes start and excludes end, well, it does have a, a start and end, so we use the bottom one. Okay, in the field, okay, it looks like the dropdown's not working, so something must be up with the field um, where my date and time is. So let me open up the attribute table and see what kind of field type. Okay, it's a string. Okay, so we need an actual, like a date and time field, not a string, so it's not recognizing it. So let's come over here to the field calculator. We'll create a new field that has the right field type and we'll pull in this um, date and time. Okay, so let's go and do that. So I'll, the new field name, I'll say new, not abbreviate, date and time, DT. The field type, yeah, date and time, okay? And again, I'm pulling that from the fields, the field ISO time, which is this right here, ISO time. Okay, so I will click OK. And at the very end, I should have a new field. Yes, called new date and time. It looks the same, but the field type is actually a date time field type. Okay, so that, that looks good. So let me click out of that. If I right click onto my, my data here again, it will go to properties. Go back to make sure we're on temporal, enable the di dynamic temporal control. Again, it's the single field, it has a start and end time. The field, yeah, so now it's date and time is able to, to be pulled in because the field type has changed. So the event duration, that is in, let me double check here. I'm just gonna say okay, so I don't have to do that again. I think the duration is a couple hours apart, but let's double check here. Three, three. So it looks like it's three hour intervals here. Okay. So three, instead of minutes, I'm gonna change that to hours. Say apply and OK. And now the the data is set up. You can see there's a little icon there. That's a temporal layer. If we come up here to the top, there's another. This is the control panel. If I click onto that, this red X means uh, it's disabled, but uh, I'm enabling it now. So it looks like my ranges aren't quite there, so let's see here. Okay, here we go, so this looks better. So we have our dates. Yeah, so I think I had this little refresh button there. So refresh from like the current date to the actual date of my, my data set. The steps, let's see, this was three in an hour. Let's go ahead and run that. Okay. So you can see it's moving according. Um, now we could also have the um, accumulation. So you can see the entire uh, path of this hurricane. So let me just pause that. 
And if I come over here to the upper right, there's a little gear symbol. Frame rate per second. Okay, cumulative range. Yeah, we want that. Frame per second. So this, so if you want to speed it up, so right now it's one frame per second. Say I want five frames per second. I just change it right there. I just go back. I can restart or click over here and uh, click play again. Okay, so it's going faster and it's accumulating that um, the path. So there you go. And also it looks like you could also loop it right here. See if I enable the loop and I just have it playing again, it will just keep going. So this is just a, an easy way just to get some data in QGIS, enable that temporal uh, controller where you could just animate um, your data where, when it has the, uh, a timestamp. So hope that helps. You guys, if you guys have any questions or issues doing this, by all means, leave a comment down below. I'll be more happy to get back to you. If you're new to the channel, welcome. I do appreciate you watching. Uh, definitely click that subscribe button. I do try to put a video out every week. If you are currently a subscriber, I greatly appreciate your support. And we'll see you guys next week.